Hey, thanks for tuning in to The Gouge. My name is David Leslie. As you can see, we're in a new location. Like I told you the last time, decided to come to the Veterans Park and Veterans Memorial here in my hometown of Arlington, Texas. And I am sitting and enjoying the Organic Garden Club section of the Memorial Park. It's very beautiful out here. This park was created in order to pay honor to the Filipino community that lost a lot of lives during the Vietnam War. And they have done an outstanding job out here. It's very quiet and very peaceful and feel very much at home. But I thought a quote was important during this time, considering where I'm at and the significance of this part. It's definitely a speech given by Theodore Roosevelt in 1907. And since the city of Arlington decided to pay honor to the second largest community here in Arlington, which is the Filipino community, I thought these words are important, especially when we as a nation are looking at hot topics like immigration reform and things that are going on with illegal immigrants into our country and actually things that are going on all over the world when it comes to immigration. But you know what, this actually hits home. So listen to these words. Again, this is Theodore Roosevelt, 1907. We should insist that if the, Im that if the immigrant who comes here in good faith becomes an American and assimilates himself to us, he shall be treated as an exact equal with everyone else. For it is an outrage to discriminate against any such man because of creed or birthplace or even origin. But this is predicted upon the person becoming in every facet an American and nothing but an American. There can be no divide. Allegiance here any man who says he is an American, but is something else also, isn't an American at all. We have no room but for one flag, and that is the American flag. We have no room but for one language, and that is the English language. We have no room but for one loyalty, and that is the sole loyalty to the American people. No truer words have ever been spoken by a president and I felt that it was definitely necessary given this location and the ambiance and the peacefulness here. We're still seeing numerous scandals going on with the VA and more things are coming to light and actually the undersecretary of the VA has currently resigned after he gave sworn testimony to Congress yesterday. His resignation was taken and accepted. Um, his name was Robert Petzl, and he left after he gave his testimony to Congress yesterday, which was a very interesting uh, hearing and definitely the veteran community, including myself and my foundation, were not impressed at all. But again, these are things that they knew back in 1996. Like I told you in previous episodes of The Gouge, Congress placed a law stating that the VA has to take care of or at least see a veterans within 30 days. Again, this all sparked out when a whistleblower sat there and said that, that the Phoenix VA Medical Center was creating a fake waiting list for our veterans and that 40 veterans reportedly died while waiting on this waiting list. Saw reports coming out of Phoenix during a town hall meeting where it was in an outrage, absolute travesty. Family members were showing up and expressing their disgust towards the treatment of their family members who were veterans. I came back from Austin as, we, as I was working with 
some of the state senators and state representatives that we have down down in there to get more information <clears throat> because the Austin Medical Center, the VA Medical Center there, were conducting the same thing. And since I was shedding light on what was going on in San Antonio and some of the brethren that I have down there that were having a hard time getting to see any kind of thick a therapist for their PTSD well now San Antonio is under the limelight so hopefully with everything going on the state of Texas is actually going to put a review in and ensure that they get all the information necessary from the VA medical centers all over here considering that the regional office is here in Waco but even more things are coming to light and some of the interesting things is that even just to touch up on just a few of the scandals that the VA was going through I mean back in 2011 they were going over another scandal with funding I mean they were wasting taxpayer dollars in the sum of 6.1 million dollars just for one conference to several hundred thousand for several other conferences each and this was something that was absolutely unheard of but as I've stated, Congress knew. They absolutely knew. And they did nothing about it. Like I said, the law was passed in 1996. Reviews were done in 2000, 2001, 2002. I mean, sure, it wasn't just but a couple years ago when North Carolina and Georgia were on the limelight for their mistreatment to veterans at their medical centers and now we're seeing Phoenix and we're seeing a nationwide review and more things are coming out of all this and to me and a lot of the veterans that I work with and a lot of the veterans organizations that I work with uh, separate from my own this is definitely feels as if it's an attack on our military Looking at some of the scandals that our active duty members have gone through, uh, the biggest one coming to light is Walter Reed and the neglect done to our veterans. Definitely in Building 18 was the focal point for the Walter Reed scandal. Was absolutely atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. And this was done to our combat veterans. Um, I myself, being a combat veteran, I definitely feel I was very fortunate. I had. God was definitely looking out for me during these times, but this is something that even goes deeper into the heart of the issue, especially since this administration is maneuvering the military and reducing the military to pre-World War II status. One of the astonishing things about that is, is that not only are they reducing the military to pre-World War II status and actually pushing members or active duty members out of the military they have actually given a gateway for 1.5 million illegal immigrants to enter the military this is starting to become an attack on our way of life this is starting to become an attack on the military not only in order to reduce it but to control it in means that we've never seen in US history think about that for a moment American citizens who openly volunteered to join the military in defense of this country, members like myself, my brothers and my sisters, are being forced out while 1.5 million illegal immigrants are being accepted. This is uncalled for. And now with everything going on with the VA scandal, you can absolutely see how this is going to affect the recruitment and the maintenance of a volunteer force because if other members of our society see the treatment being done not just while you're on active duty but when you leave active duty it's absolutely atrocious even for members here and the state of Texas, the state of Texas holds about 65% of all DOD contracts. It also has one of the, uh, one of the largest military populations 
throughout the entire United States. And we saw not but a couple years ago over in El Paso, the army base there, where the base commander was sitting there and placing members of the active duty in connex boxes on the absolute other side of the base. This is the kind of treatment that people who volunteer to defend this nation should expect. And it's going on nationwide. And these are things that mainstream media isn't reporting to the American people. Mind you, the mainstream media should be educating us, not dumbing us down. And even though the base commander was relieved from El Paso, the situation still remains. Now, those of y'all that don't understand what a Connex box is, you ever drive down the freeway and you see the semis with these big metal crates in the back for transport, well, that's a Connex box. And they were causing members of the Army who felt as if they were diagnosed with PTSD to live in these boxes, separate from everybody else. These are all issues regarding people trying to cover their ass. Forgive my language, but that's it in a nutshell. Just like what we see with the director of the Phoenix VA who falsified information. Not only just created a fake waiting list, but lied about veteran suicides in Spokane, Washington. She did all this to ensure that her performance reviews were AJ squared away. She cared more about herself than the veterans that she served. And again, this is an epidemic that we are seeing nationwide nationwide and mind you this is an attack on our way of life this is an attack on our military and I see it daily absolutely see it daily when I'm working with, with veterans who have uh, PTSD to veterans who are seeking treatment for TBI they're not getting it from the VA what's happening is is foundations like my own are going to the private sector and the private sector is opening their arms in order to help our veterans. It's absolutely astonishing work. Absolutely astonishing work and it's absolutely heartfelt to see the private sector here in this country take in its veterans and do everything they can for them. Something that the VA should be doing themselves. But mind you, this is an example of government-controlled health care. So pay attention to it. Pay attention to everything that's going on. And keep an eye out. Because if these incidences continue, the idea of us having a volunteer force is slowly going to diminish. This generation is the first generation to actively seek positions within the military who openly volunteer, whether it's they cho chose to enlist or they received a commission. This is the first time in history that the United States has had such an, a long engagement, such a long war on two fronts and Iraq and Afghanistan and the United States didn't have to use a draft in order to fill its ranks tells you the heart that the American society has not just for our freedom but for our nation and our community and our way of life God bless our military and God bless everyone that serves I'm going to sit here and enjoy this gorgeous view here in Arlington. So peaceful, as you can see behind me. And being a true black heart, a jungle bunny, I enjoy being out in the woods. So I am absolutely loving it here. 
stay tuned for the next gouge where I'm actually going to pull up a insanely hot topic. At first when I thought about it, I thought it was going to be a, a stretch until I actually started digging in deep. Remember, the gouge. Go in below the surface. Dig in a little bit. Get a little more information. Bring out the truth and facts. So the next episode of the gouge, this is going to be the topic. How the liberal agenda, how the progressive movement, Democrats, are actually using the successes of Reaganomics to attack the American people. Think about it. I'll put it all together for you on the next gouge. Thanks for pressing play. Thanks for listening to me. My name is David Leslie, and this is your edition of The Gouge.